he was heir to a Japanese imperial system that was quite young because for 13 generations Japan had existed under a shogunacy, a military rule by a governor general known as the Shogun. When the Japanese emperor finally reinstated himself as God on earth during the rule of the Emperor Meiji, that was at the same time that the Americans forced Japan to open to the West. That is why the Japanese emperor installed himself as God on earth and overthrew the shogun and the military government of Japan was because the military government had been unable to hold off the Americans from bombing Japanese shores in 1853 under the orders of Commodore Perry and forcing Japan to open its ports to trade. At that time, Emperor Meiji decided that the military government was anachronistic, it was backwards, it was futile, and so he uh, established the reinstitutionalization of theocracy, rule by divinity, rule by the god emperor of Japan on earth. And when he reestablished that, he made certain that all of the Japanese were mobilized under a guiding figure because every single person in Japan, in pre-war Japan, in one way or another, by some drop of blood, was related to the emperor. So we are speaking of the father of an immense national family. We have individuals like William Henry who are doing their best to help explain to the American people that if the Americans were to turn all of their attention each day towards Washington, D.C., the way the Muslims turn all of their attention several times a day towards the black stone of Mecca, how we could channel that energy to accomplish great things. Is it so difficult to conceive of the fact that when the Japanese people worshipped their god emperor as a divine manifestation of their race, that he would not be able to channel the brilliance of the Japanese people to accomplish what he accomplished? And there are indeed moral questions to what he accomplished, biological warfare. But in the end, the biological warfare which he conducted saved his people from genocide, which was the objective stated of the American government throughout the war. The American government made the stated objective that every Japanese woman carries in her womb a future soldier. Every Japanese child grows up to be a female factory worker or a future soldier. There are no civilians in Japan. Every Japanese must die. This was the stated official objective on military documents. Whoever doubts this needs to review the military documents of the United States. Now, Emperor Hirohito was faced with an enemy that wanted the extinction of his race. He proved on American prisoners of war, Russian prisoners of war, Australian and British prisoners of war, that he could kill them with the biocidal weapons he created. When he presented the ultimatum of using these and other weapons to the United States, then the United States was forced to sue for peace. They were forced to sue for peace under Truman, who fortunately was a wise enough leader to do so. The leader who we had throughout the Second World War was a madman known as Franklin Delano Roosevelt who uttered a condition of no surrender, unconditional surrender. Unconditional surrender means that no peace can be signed. Unconditional surrender means that the person faced with that ultimatum, the nation, the race, must prostate themselves before a conqueror and allow themselves up to the mercies of that conqueror for whatever the conqueror wants. And being that the stated American objective towards the Japanese was genocidal, then the emperor had no other means of response than a genocidal ultimatum on his own. Franklin Delano Roosevelt died. He was succeeded by Harry Truman. Harry Truman accepted the inevitable and brought the war to an end. That is the reality. Your problem is accepting. Now, in terms of phage, P-H-A-G-E, in terms of dirigibles technology, that we had our own dirigibles technology, this is a statement that belabors the obvious. We also had our own rocket technology in America from Robert Godard. And we actually had it before the Germans in terms of the modern age. That did not stop us from bringing in the Nazi rocketeers as personified by Dr. Werner von Braun to revitalize our entire rocket technology system, to administer it, to bring us into the space age, simply because though we had it first, theirs was better. This was the case for the Japanese. In terms of dirigible technology, we are also facing interdepartmental infighting. When I am presented with the fact that the dirigibles were here in America, 
They were not under the U.S. Air Force. At this time, we no longer had a United States Army Air Corps. We had a United States Army, we had a United States Air Force, a full-fledged service with a different departmental heading, a different budget. The Navy would not allow its Naval Air Service dirigibles into the exploitation or use or experimentation of the Air Force. They had to get their own. They were more than happy to use the Japanese dirigibles because they had proven their military value by literally sailing across the Pacific. Now, in terms of the Air Force itself, uh, we are facing an interdepartmental empire that literally sank the Navy's ability to wage a modern war. What happened was the Navy had developed to completion a viable seaplane strike force that would make their Navy a modern Navy in the post-war world of all-out nuclear war, since we are going into that subject, the Navy had designed a series of sea transport planes, a series of sea bombers, a series of seaborne jet aircraft that would be parked in atolls all over the Pacific, and therefore no series of nukes would wipe out the total strike force. And these were nuclear capable. Now the Navy would be able, therefore, to take all of their nuclear strike capability off of those carriers because the carriers in modern war are suffrage to the equation of one tactical nuke equals one carrier. And because of that, the Navy was confronted with the Air Force who lobbied viciously with the U.S. government under the auspice of if the Navy is able to carry out strategic nuclear war, what need do we have for an Air Force? So at an extremely high level of government, the executive level, the Navy was ordered to disband its seaplane strike force. And that's why we have giant supercarriers that are fit only for colonial warfare, colonial power projection. They can hover off the coast of nations. They can send in strike fighters to do strikes that can do damage to in-depth targets, but only to a certain level of in-depth strike. In terms of the overall strategic bombardment, at a continental or intercontinental level, this is left to the U.S. Air Force, or was until the time of the end of the age of the bomber. And even that became iffy with the development of the B-2, and uh, the stealth bomber itself was of no strategic value whatsoever because there were only 20 of them. So you could not wage a massive bombardment campaign that you could have in the Second World War. They were simply too expensive to build. So all you could do was surgical strikes with the Air Force at that point in history, and the U.S. Navy was fit only for colonial warfare off of the coast of Korea, Vietnam, wherever they're sent to today. This is not a modern strike force in the sense of all-out nuclear war or modern warfare with an industrialized state. This is a colonial power projection force. That is what they were left with due to interdepartmental air infighting from the Air Force. In terms of Maui, how this guy is silly, well, I may have slurred my words uh, on the video, but I'm talking about Maori Island off of Tacoma in the state of Washington in the Northwest Pacific. Since I don't believe I slurred my words, I believe that Phage is mishearing what I am saying and thinking of their last vacation in Hawaii. So when I'm speaking of Maori Island, what had happened there was that you had a UFO crash in which the investigating Air Force officers who were taking UFO debris back to the continental United States were both killed in their airplane when their plane blew up in midair. Now we're talking about actual deaths involved in crash site debris retrieval. So I'm saying this happened two weeks before Roswell, but no one speaks of this. Instead, they speak of their last vacation in Hawaii because no one remembers the details on this because they're all paying attention to Roswell as the holy grail of ufology. In terms of rainfall, uh, in terms of the debris with hieroglyphics, this is Japanese military stenciling. In this day and age of computer graphics, there are very few people who understand the concept of stenciling, but it's a very simple concept along with the slide rule or the abacus that has become technologically obsolescent. But what we used to do was take hollowed out words on a ruler and just take those letters and we would spray paint over them and we would have a militarily uniform set of letters or numeric symbols that would be placed onto various vehicles, onto various advertisements if need be. They had uses civilian and military, but this stenciling is what was seen by uh, 